Hello, I'm Lisa Reynolds, Assistant Director of Nursing for Education and Workforce Development at South London and Maudsley NHS Trust. Hello, I'm Sheila Grandison, Training and Development Lead for the Arts Therapies at the East London NHS Foundation Trust. Hello, I'm Julie Attenborough and I'm an Associate Dean at City University of London. And we're going to talk to you about our study in which we used art therapy material to promote positive attitudes towards mental illness with adult nursing students. And our study was very much grounded in the need to ensure parity of esteem across physical health and mental health in the nursing curriculum at City University of London. And that reflects the current policy drivers in relation to strengthening mental health care provision in adult acute services and the development of integrated care systems. And we wanted to ensure that graduates graduate nurses were fit to work within integrated care systems on graduation. So the integration of physical and mental health care in new professional standards and roles, such as the nursing associate, has very much started to shape the landscape of the nursing workforce and to ensure that physical health and mental health are integrated within the provision of care. However, despite this, attitudes and skills deficits remain, and this can be challenging in relation to the provision of mental health care in the adult nursing workforce, despite it being very well established that mental health is a key part of the adult nursing curricula. So what we wanted to do is to use art as an alternative way to promote empathy and to challenge negative attitudes and beliefs towards mental health and illness with adult nursing students. So the project. Mental health service users presented and discussed their work from art therapy with a group of adult nursing students. Attitudes with student participants were measured before and after the session using the CAMI, the Community Attitudes to Mental Illness Questionnaire, which is a validated tool, and they completed this online. Focus group discussion was held at the end of the workshop once the service users presenters had left. We've illustrated the presentation with images taken from the historical Edward Adamson collection of artworks. These were made by adults in an open art studio in a psychiatric setting and are now housed in the Wellcome Library. So the aim of the study was to co-design, deliver and evaluate a workshop for adult nursing students in which mental health services presented and discussed their work from art therapy. And this was to inform the development of future larger scale study and or inclusion into an existing nursing curriculum. We also wanted to use the opportunity to explore the impact of the workshop on students' attitudes to mental illness. So we invited all BSc part three, so the final stage of the programme, adult nursing students at City University of London to take part in the study. They were all contacted by email on, I think, three occasions and asked if they would participate. Um, however, only six out of 94 students accepted the invitation and then participated in the workshop. So just to recap and provide more information, the service user-led workshop um, took place. There were two data collection points, an online survey using Qualtrics before and after the, the workshop using the CAMI questionnaire. Following the workshop, all st student participants took part in a focus group and that was facilitated by an experienced art therapist. And the focus group was fully recorded and transcribed using numbers to identify the different contributions of contributors. Participants were free to participate in any or all parts of the study, so they didn't have to do, they could just kind of do the CAMI, they didn't have to complete the workshop or the um, focus group if they didn't wish to. And they were paid £10 for each stage of the study they completed. The study was funded by City University of London from internal grant and ethical approval was obtained from the Ethics Committee at City University of London. So just to say a little bit about the CAMI scale. It was developed in Canada and it was set up following quite a lot of op opposition to the deinstitutionalization of mental health services in Canada. Um, so it sought to look um, specifically at the attitudes of people towards mental health. 
and illness. One of the things that we wanted to say from the outset was that the terminologies employed in this uh, scale are very consistent with how people talked about mental health and illness at the time. Um, our experiences that our ethics committee found those terms offensive and was not prepared uh, to approve us using the scale without uh, changing those terms. Uh, which we did, uh, which of course uh, does bring into question the, the validity of what we, we sent out to the uh, students. So we will be presenting some results from the CAMI, but we, uh, don't, we won't actually be making any great claims uh, for those in terms of, um, of how um, important or um, valid, valid they are. So the other um, approach that we used was uh, with the qualitative data that was gathered from the focus group was analysed using a thematic analysis approach. So we followed the stages um, as outlined by Braun and Clark. Uh, the coding was undertaken independently by two researchers and then a third researcher checked those um, themes and categories afterwards. Um, and the CAMI was distributed, as Lisa said, using Qualtrics. Um, and um, we will be reporting on that later in this presentation. So six participants attended um, the interactive workshop. That was very low participation, and we um, will talk a little bit about that in the discussion, but it was only just over 6% of the total number of students who were invited. Uh, we had two mental health service users presenting and discussing the art they developed um, at different stages of their recovery journey. Um, and the CAMI questionnaire was fully completed by uh, all six participants before and after the um, workshop, which we, we think demonstrates um, very high engagement of all the participants with uh, that particular tool, which is, um, if anybody's ever used it, it's quite a, a lengthy tool. And here are some more images from the Edward Adamson collection, some of which have resonances you know, to the artworks which the service users spoke about. So now we're looking at the main findings um, from, from the focus group. So the first theme which we identified in the analysis uh, was student participants expressing anxiety in the crossing of boundaries, their hesitancy, the constraints that they felt, a strong feeling of not wanting to upset or cause pain. And to give you some verbatim um, quotes, so when the second person was showing us his artwork, I wanted to be more specific with the questions I wanted to ask but I didn't want to cross any boundaries, so I decided to limit myself. The second theme was students differentiating between the service users using metaphors and the literal use of words, both um, verbatim, uh, but also in the artworks. And, and this was important, um, as one student participant said, I think one artwork of his said grave diggers or grave, something to do with the grave being stolen. So I was just wondering whether that was him being literal or whether that was just a metaphor. Theme three was data about the empath empath empathetic um, uh, responses that we had to students to do with the service users personal journeys so what we noticed about the words and art um, communicating those emotional aspects and again using you know, some verbatim quotes from the students one said what they're actually feeling like she said you can just say I'm sad or depressed or whatever but it's just like I don't know. Pictures have a powerful voice and colours are powerful. And this was um, taken a little bit further by, by, the stu you know, by the students when they could differentiate between um, past experiences. One said it's almost a continuous thing for him where it's, speaking about the past, is still following him. Even right now it's affecting him. Whereas they could differentiate between the second service user, 
and about whom they thought, it's as though she's left the past in the past. The past has happened and now she's looking forward for something better to happen. The fourth theme was about the perceptions of the adult nursing students and really about the system that they worked in. And these were quite vivid um, examples you know, from their experience. You know, one student participant said, and especially on the wards, you know, they're like, oh, just leave that person. That person's depressed. Just leave them. You're making it worse by not providing the care that even though we don't know much, still, that person is having problems. Isolating them is making the symptoms probably even worse, especially when they have a physical problem. It will get worse. The fifth was a very strong plea for increased education in mental health for students participating in the focus groups. And again, very strongly expressed, said one, one student um, said, I feel like the reason why certain people with mental illnesses are isolated in hospitals is because you don't have training. So we're just assuming that that person is going to act in a certain way. So if we had training about it, you would feel more comfortable to talk to them because they're basically normal people as well. And another example was, I just feel as though it's a huge misjustice that, we're created, uh, that we've created for people who have mental illnesses. We could support them so much better than we are, and it's quite disappointing. So theme six was about examples of people with mental illness being stigmatized and stereotyped. I feel like we just assume that because someone has a mental disorder, they're automatically crazy, but they're not. I feel like when you hear the word bipolar, automatic, automatically you feel like, oh, okay, this person has this bipolar. I need to watch what I say because there's a possibility that they may flip, but I feel like, like that's not the case. The seventh theme was the students exploring the role of artwork. And this had quite a strong you know, impact on the students. Seeing the artwork, obviously, it was really interesting. It's obviously in their own minds how they want to express it. So you would never be able to get to their minds and you would never know what they're thinking. It's like a way of getting a glimpse because you'll never see the whole picture, but it's just being able to see something that they can relate to. And, and one, one student you know, very you know, succinctly said, for the lady, some of her drawings, when she did explain them, they were like, oh, wow. Again, and here are some more images, again from an historical um, art collection, but they do show just the, the range and the, and the strength and intensity of, of images that are made. The eighth theme was about confidence. One of our placements, they put me in a mental health ward it was really, really interesting, and I found it so difficult to understand. And the RMNs, they were quite confident they knew what they were doing. But there were RGNs there. They still had questions, and it's completely different when you've got a physical problem and a mental problem. It was just really hard for me to fit in and understand what's going on. And another student said, oh. Sorry, we moved on to um, the, the second part, sorry, of uh, theme eight, which was the actual impact of the session on confidence. For example, said one student, I had a mental health patient who was not responding well to me at all, or the other nurses. So maybe now I have an idea as to why. And another student said, this session was good in a sense that it really gave us the experience to know to what extent people go through because when they got up to the room, you would never think that this person wants to commit suicide. It just wouldn't come. Or this person was homeless or the things that they've said, it just wouldn't occur to you. So just very briefly, some of the findings from the uh, CAMI uh, questionnaire with all the caveats that we've already said. So the first, um, the slide demonstrates that students' broad agreement that uh, mental illness is an illness like any other. 
the second slide, um, perhaps a little more um, equivocal, uh, that mentally ill people are far less of a danger than most people suppose, but general um, agreement with that statement. I think we, we were struck by how many people couldn't sort of say, really. So we had a, a third of, of people couldn't, uh, could neither agree nor disagree. And then lastly, um, locating mental health facilities in a re residential area, downgrading the neighbourhood, uh, reflecting the roots of this, this tool. Um, and half of the students could uh, neither agree or disagree with that. So some very mixed um, presentations about student attitudes in the results of the CAMI. Okay, so... <clears throat> Overall, we did find very clear that we had poor recruitment and as I mentioned before is that we felt this may have been affected by students being on their final placement and so we need to consider for any future study that um, we do this possibly earlier on in the third year or maybe even consider where we cite it throughout the curriculum, maybe thinking about part two, for example, stage two of the programme. The approach might need to be included in the curriculum, so full, fully embedded rather than as an add-on so that it fully enhances the existing provision for mental health within the adult nursing programme. Participants, as Julie said, participate in all elements of the study, fully completing the CAMI questionnaire. And this is fairly lengthy, so we did expect that some wouldn't fully complete, um, but they all did so. Um, and so in the future, we want to include an empathy scale and this is quite positive that we may be able to actually do that alongside the CAMI uh, and have that completed. Um, and there was also quite positively some indication that the use of artwork brought a new perspective on mental illness and invoked some empathy from the students that participated with this study. So in conclusion, um, the study clearly provided an indication that engaging with service user recovery through art in this way may be used in education with adult nursing students to support the development of a more positive attitude towards people with mental health problems. Also, the findings supported and will inform the development of a larger scale study to further de determine and explore the impact of using artwork, both in relation to nursing attitudes and in also their practice. So that's the end of our presentation, but we have included for you some reading, which we would suggest um, in relation to artwork and nursing attitudes. We also have in there the link to the Adamson collection, which we'd recommend that you, you look through. And we have provided the references that we've used at the end of the presentation. So thank you very much for listening. Um, if you have any further thoughts or questions, um, there is a contact for me. Lisa Reynolds, an email address that you can email me on. Um, otherwise, I hope that later on you'll be able to join the panel discussion around creative approaches. So thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.